Hey, what's up, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Asia Rugby Live, Real Talk, Real Rugby. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are and whatever you do. Thank you for joining us on this uh, weekly special show just for you guys where we keep on talking about rugby as we hashtag return to play. As we talk about return to play, uh, as you guys know, two weeks ago, there's been a rugby tournament that happened in the Middle East. But before that, I would like to encourage you guys to don't forget to um, subscribe to Asia Rugby Live. Don't forget to press on the notification button, uh, the bell button so that you receive uh, future notifications should we have new content on Asia Rugby Live. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all the social medias that we have. Anyway, just a little bit of news for you guys. As um, if you go to hrrugby.com, play welfare research boosted by H a World Rugby uh, funding injection. That's uh, really good for players, especially as we want to know what's the things that uh, you know affect players in the long terms and whatnot. And uh, the next news I would like to um, update you guys is uh, pioneering Olympic female referee Alhambra Nivas, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago, excited uh, by the next generation of uh, referees, women referees, uh, for sure. And increased rest days confirmed for Rugby World Cup 2023. So all, you can read all this news on asiarugby.com. And if we talk about uh, return to play, this show this uh big last week we had a full show full of testosterone and to balance it out we have invited some ladies from the middle east as we want to talk about return to play where they were competing in the arab sevens and let's bring on the ladies from syria from uae and also from lebanon we have yara bomata sarah abdul elbaki and farah al azdi okay we're going to start with uh yara bomata from lebanon yara how are you can you tell us a little bit about yourself and probably your rugby journey hello everyone uh as he introduced me my name is yara bomata and i started rugby r roughly around four or five years ago in my university and uh like so far it has been a very challenging career because in Lebanon there are, there aren't much teams to play against but uh, despite that we managed to play domestically against one other team which is the Jamhur and uh, yeah <laughs> I think that's about it that's great so how many how many years have you been playing rugby uh, around four or five years that's good that's good and like as like I, i've been saying it and I, like i always say we we need people like you to take on rugby so that we have a continuous uh, you know ladies like you guys keep on playing the game keep on growing the game uh sarah you are in uh, syria can you tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself and uh your rugby journey so far uh yeah of course uh, hi everyone thank you for having us uh I started playing rugby three years ago. I uh, played with the first uh, Syrian women national team. Uh, and after a while of playing, I wanted to get more involved in the game. So I took a uh, World Rugby team and e-coaching course. And also I match official course, level one. Uh, and after that, I became an assistant coach for the uh, men 15s national team. And uh, uh, after a while, Syria Rugby gave me the chance to officiate my first rugby match. Uh, it was in the Syrian Championship, uh, a 15s men match. Um, and uh, based on the match, I became the first uh, Arab uh, Asian woman referee. Oh, that's great. So um, that means are you, are you going to be a referee after you finish playing the game? I still don't know, to be honest. I'm doing a lot of stuff <laughs> and I don't know. Uh, what where where this path is going to take me you know i i love all of them and uh, i didn't choose yet <laughs> probably it could be coaching as well and uh farah yeah. you're in you're in dubai you're in uae and uh interesting fact to you guys farah is a forensic forensic scientist which is wow i think that's the first on our <laughs> show so so farah can you tell us uh, what do you do uh, as a forensic uh, scientist and how do you juggle with the job and also rugby. Okay, thank you for having me and how is everyone? 
Um, yeah, so it is a very tackling job. Um, so I go between crime scene and I do serology as well as forensic anthropology, which is part of uh, recovering bodies and excavation. So, uh, wow. uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, your rugby journey? How did you start playing rugby and you know how has it been so far in rugby terms for you? Uh, for me, I started rugby in the UAE, uh, in Alain, uh, part of a club of, uh, called Alain Amblers. I played between the age of 9 to 14, uh, but that was mixed teams, so boys and girls. Uh, we were part of all, um, the Sevens Youth Tournaments uh, in the UAE, but then I continued my studies. Um, I wasn't playing rugby, so I came back to rugby when I moved back to UAE because I studied in Australia. So when I came back and finished my education, um, I started 2017 in the same team I started out in. So, Elaine Amblers. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, sharing with us your rugby journey. And, of course, just will let you guys know, Sarah and Farah are the captains of their countries. So, well done, guys. And hopefully, like I said, um, you know, continue yeah. on, keep on contributing to the game. And, of course, I think the game will keep on giving a lot back to you guys. And uh, talking, about, um, talking about return to play, so every one of you have a uh, participated in the Arab Sevens that happened in Egypt a couple of weeks back. And of course, I think after so long not uh, participating in a cross-border tournament or an international tournament, the experience uh, must have been great for you. Uh, Yara, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, at first it was a very daunting task. Um, we weren't as prepared as we had wanted to be, but uh, going on the field and actually playing our hearts out was uh, such a nice experience and it taught us a lot and hopefully in the next tournament we'll do much better as well. But I think you guys did well uh, um, entirely, right? <laughs> uh, well, uh, honestly, we hoped we could have done better. Um, yeah, we were very not satisfied with the results, but this is fueling us to train even more and uh, to do better next time. But I guess every game is a, is a learning process, right? That's true. Uh, Farah, how was, uh, how was the experience uh, of competing in the Arab Sevens? Can you enlighten us? Um, it was very enjoyable and it was great to have um, all the teams there together, both men and women, and especially for um, UAE uh, being like the first Arab tournament for us to be in. Um, it was just a lovely atmosphere. Um, and of course, they created a bubble for everyone to be safe. So it was, I enjoyed being on the field as well and to be back in it after a year of not playing. And uh, how was the playing experience so far? Uh, for me, I've always enjoyed contact. So um, for our team, uh, they are developing. Uh, they were quite young. Uh, so for them, it was a great experience as well. And I think it will just continue, um, hopefully continue, and they will enjoy more tournaments to come. And Sarah, the, the result for your team was, uh, was great as well. Can you, can you talk us through the, you know, the experience that you guys went through, the Arab Sevens? Yeah, the, it was such a great experience. We did our best, and uh, uh, though we had a short amount of time to to prepare for it, but uh, we we did it. We uh, we had a great result, and the experience was great. We um, uh, I remember at the end of the tournament, you know, everyone was celebrating after we got our medals, and uh, we were taking pictures with other teams, and the atmosphere was was so great, and it felt so good to be back. And uh, what if we talk about the going into the tournament, right? They have uh, right now. Um, I'm sure the tournament and also the country have a set of protocols and SOPs that you guys need to follow going into that country. So, in in, in rugby terms, as as far as the tournament is concerned, uh, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit on what are the protocols that you guys went through and also the uh, the SOPs that you guys need to follow? Yeah, we, we all did the tests before we went there and uh, uh, in the academy, every everything was so well organized. Uh, they made sure that uh, they're taking the appropriate uh, safety measures. We felt safe there and we also take another test before we got back home. And Farah, um, um, if you talk about 
uh, you know, going through the protocols and SOP. How, how was it for you guys from the UAE going into Egypt? Um, it was a smooth process. So again, testing, I think, 48 hours prior to departure. And mm -hmm. and then that was it. So it was pretty easy and everyone got tested, no negatives. So it was a smooth process. Then coming in, uh, when you guys arrived in Egypt, was there a uh, quarantine measures that you need, you guys need to go through? Or do you, um, you guys... Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, arriving into Egypt, we had to provide those test results. And... Um, they were all right, and because they all put the teams together in the same area, so um, I think we were safe, and um, yeah. That's great. And for Yara, for the uh, Lebanese uh, rugby team, um, when you came back from the tournament, so you had to be quarantined. So how was the experience uh, for you? Uh, we had to quarantine before and after we, we left, and you're only given permission like the weekend of the tournament so so to be able to train because the country is still in lockdown and after we came back we oh during training we also had to take quick pcr tests in order to uh, uh, s sort of prove that we're all negative so we wouldn't po pose a risk to any of our teammates and then coming back we all had to qu quarantine for about a week and uh to be safe and not to pose a risk to any one of any of our loved ones or family. <laughs> uh, so to our fans out there, to our to whoever is watching, guys, if you have any questions, uh, you know, you wanna ask to our panelists today. If you wanna ask about how was the experience, how you know anything you you wanna ask, you wanna ask about Middle Eastern rugby, ladies uh, rugby in the Middle East, please uh, comment down below, and we'll try to relay your questions to our panelists today. Sarah, if you talk about the, uh, you know, it must, the feeling must be good after so long of not competing in a cross-border tournament. Can you comment on that? Of course, yeah. Yeah, it, it felt so great to be back, you know. Uh, um, it's It's been a while since we, we've uh, contributed in a, and participated in a tournament. So it felt so nice to be back and this tournament kind of gave us a push to to provide more and wanting to to work more on on uh, ourselves and it was such a great experience to all of us. Uh, if we talk about the um, uh, preparation going into the tournament, how 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 long did you guys take to prepare for the tournament? We only had one month of preparation, uh, which was really a short amount of time, you know. But despite that fact, we, we were able to do something. And um, it actually, it showed us that that, uh, that we can do uh, something uh, great. And uh, it, it was really a great experience. Uh, Farah, what do you look forward to, Farah, uh, going... Uh, into the future, we talk about cross border tournaments and whatnot. So, w what do you look forward to in the future for for rugby, especially? Well, I'm I'm hoping that it does come back, you know, in full force again. Um, so, with all the teams, and I'm I'm seeing that there are uh, tournaments coming up for ladies as well. So, looking forward to um, expanding and experiencing uh, rugby around the world. Uh, do you miss the Dubai Sevens, especially? Yes, uh, so the last one was in 2019 the, that I was uh, uh, unfortunate to play. So uh, that was just before the COVID. So that was actually the last time the seven was, uh, Sevens was on. Uh, this year, uh, 2020, it was cancelled. But they're hoping to have Dubai Sevens 2021 on the 4th, I think, of December of this year. So looking forward to so that are, are you to be a part are, of it. Are you, are you going to play that tournament? Uh, hopefully. Inshallah. Looking forward to that, I'm sure. And I, I'm curious, uh, Farah, if you can tell us, just now you were, you mentioned about you started like, being in the UAE, then you moved to Australia. Um, how, how How is it different, uh, rugby in Australia and rugby in, in the UAE, in terms of rugby culture? Um, th let's say the rugby community is uh, big, but they also have another sport, which is AFL, so footy. Um, but it is a big um, league there, and the community is big for rugby, uh, the Wallabies. So the culture, as in, it's part of life, you know. So it's part of families. 
So I hope that soon UAE can create, well, they are developing and creating a community of rugby where, you know, they have programs for schools, competitions and whatnot that they didn't have before, especially when I was younger. Talking about rugby programs, right? Um, probably, uh, Sarah, you can share with us the uh, rugby development program for ladies in your country. So how, how is it? Yeah, it is uh, it's going great, you know, especially after this tournament, we uh, more people are asking more about this game. Uh, uh, more women are willing to join us and to join the team, which is something really makes me so happy that uh, that we actually uh, affected them in, in, a, in a good way. And now they have something to look up to. Uh, we also uh, we're willing to do a, uh, a, a yeah, an online coaching course, uh, and uh, uh, many females are tending to 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 actually participate in that course, uh, which is really uh, necessary because we need to have more female coaches and uh, not only players, you know, uh, and maybe uh, also uh, more females uh, in, uh, of sharing as well. So it's 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 going really great. The uh, women's rugby in Syria is really growing, and uh, we're having more media coverage now, uh, which is something uh, really amazing. And because of the result, I I heard that uh, the the Olympics Council was uh, you know was really uh, interested in rugby after that, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, my, uh, he congratulated us and we uh, everyone celebrated us here when we came back. We had such a positive uh, feedback from people here. That's great. That's great to hear. Congratulations to you guys. Uh, Yara, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, identity of Lebanon rugby? How, how's, how do you think it's different from other countries? Uh... Well, at first, the rugby community is unlike any sport I've ever tried here in Lebanon. Uh, every one of the girls, I love them so much. They're honestly one of my closest friends because the sport is its a very violent game on the field, but off the pitch, it's always such an, like, even if we're playing against our opponents, it's always such a good community. Like, everyone has love and respect for the sport and therefore love and respect for uh, everyone else. And uh, that's mainly one of the reasons why I fell in love with rugby. I guess not violent, but physical, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. A barbarian's game played by a gentlewoman like you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you want to talk about, uh, uh, I want to talk a little bit about development. So how's the development of rugby in, in your country uh, for women's rugby, Yara? Uh, well, it's still a growing sport. Hopefully it grows more and more uh, thanks to the exposure that we had from multiple uh, news outlets here in Lebanon. We are hoping to expand our sport and expand our clubs further in order to gain more experience and have more domestic tournaments here in Lebanon in order to get uh, uh, better internationally and uh, like uh, compete properly internationally. Yeah, for sure. And uh, probably if you, if you can ask uh, the UAE, uh, Farah, you can tell us a little bit that there's a lot of um, programs to grow women's rugby in your country, right? Um, that is right. And I, uh, part of the UAE uh, Federation of Rugby, um, that organization, their mission is a, you know, to create a community, you know, rugby community. So they have now implemented courses from like uh, year four to 12 for all kids, um, in public, I think public schools. So that would be great that they have courses that also teach students about rugby and teachers, because most PE teachers within schools might not know about rugby, but they have courses now to help implement that. And it helps as well when uh, the the Asia rugby president is based in in uh, the U UAE to help uh, the UAE Rugby Federation as well. And I'm sure because of his leadership he has uh, inspired a lot of these uh, development programs uh, that's being done in the uae right that is right so their mission is to create hopefully get to international standards so they're doing they're doing absolutely great and they're going the right way about it 
Uh, moving forward, uh, I want to talk about the uh, unstoppable programs uh, where, you know, Sarah, you've been uh, shortlisted as uh, the last 32, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you know, can, can you take us through the unstoppable program for you that you have gone through? Like my challenges? Yeah, yeah. Or the campaign itself. Okay. So uh, first of all, it's it's uh, the campaign. It's been such a great journey so far. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, amongst such incredible and powerful ladies. You know, we get to learn a lot from each other, and um, and you know, it, it feels so good when 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 you're surrounded by people who actually get you and who who have been through similar challenges as you. Because we we all have been through challenges. Um, I myself have been uh, through so much when uh, people started, uh, you know, trying to get me out of rugby. And uh, I've been heard a lot of, of words like, uh, you can't do it, uh, you're, you're a girl, you, you, rugby is not for you, you know. So I've been through a lot to, to, uh, to actually be here today. And uh, it's kind of feel good that someone actually understands you and, and there for you. And uh, it, it's really amazing. So, uh, it's been an amazing journey so far. So what does unstoppable uh, means to you personally? Yeah, it, it is so special to me. You know, I... Uh, uh, and I hopefully I get to be one of the fifteen uh, unstoppables because um, it it would take me to a place where I can influence more women and uh, I can inspire more women and guide them and lead them into the world of rugby and not not only in Syria but uh, all over Asia. That's great. That's great. And we need people like you to inspire more women to take up uh, rugby. And guys. Uh, uh, we have we have a Facebook question, so let's take a Facebook question. And this is from hold on one second. We are trying to cue the question from Facebook. This is from Nur Hafizuddin. Uh, Nur Hafizuddin. So, how women's club in Middle East planning on uh, planning on increasing the number of females uh, playing rugby? Uh, probably I can, uh, Farah, Farah, probably you can answer this question. Okay. Well, uh, for me, um, increasing it, I guess also it comes down to like us promoting it, going around, telling yeah. them about the game, um, advertising. And as um, Sarah said, like when you actually meet other women as well and you tell them about rugby, because most of my teammates uh, in Elaine, they've all, you know, said, what is rugby? How do you get into rugby? And then when you tell them about it, they're, they enjoy it. So I think also just being aware that there is a game out there that is not football, basketball. And um, as uh, most of us girls know that when you're on the field with your sisters, um, it's a great feeling that you have support the left and the right side of you as well as behind you. I think for the for the other uh, the others uh, like probably Yara, I'm sure you have uh, had an experience of asking your other female friends to join rugby, and for them they have no clue about it. So how do you uh, try to convince them to come for a rugby training, Yara? Well, first of all, their first misconception is that it's such an aggressive game that uh, they're very intimidated at first. So. I tell them to come, that we're not going to start off with tackling, of course, that we're going to start off with simple passing and teaching them about the basics of the game. And uh, like slowly through the basics and the community, once they get to meet the other teammates, they start falling in love with the game and they start gaining more confidence to tackle <laughs> eventually. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, I think uh, Sarah, you can relate to this as well, right? um you know trying to ask your female friends to to join so how how is it uh, for you in your case you convince your friends to come for you know rugby training to get involved in rugby well yeah as as yara said you you don't just uh teach them how to tackle right away you know because they'll be afraid and they they won't do it again so we start with basics and you you kind of you know show them that rugby is not only a contact sport or a physical sport it's also a smart one 
uh, and you show them the atmosphere, the atmosphere that this game creates, which which is a unique one, and uh, you kind of uh, uh, show them how 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 we are all a family, and and they immediately would feel that they're part of something so special and so unique. Um, in terms of uh, in the UAE, uh, Farah, have, have you recruited other uh, girls, other women to join rugby? And what, what are the challenges for you in doing that? Well, just like most, when they say, oh, tackling, they're like, oh, no, I can't do that. So <laughs> going around, when you try to campaign, especially around the club and, you know, saying there's an open day or a fundraiser and some, you know, especially majority of the teammates that I have, some are teachers, some are mothers you know, older generation, and most are expats. So um, some of them don't know about rugby. But once, as most of um, or what Yara said, that, you know, it's intimidating. But once you start doing the fitness and, you know, handling the ball and uh, running, you don't go straight into tackling, and soon they start loving the game. So I guess it's introducing it to them slowly. Yeah, talking about... In um you want to break the barrier, you want to break the, the wall into, into introducing this sport to other, other women, other people, other new people who doesn't know uh, what rugby is all about. Rugby is, I think most of you guys would agree, rugby is not just about tackling, not just about being physical on the field, but I think a lot of the values of the field as well. And I'm sure like uh, people like you guys, Yara, Sarah and uh, Farah, you guys can, can relate to that. Probably... Um, Yara, you can relate this story of you know rugby values and share with our audience. What 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 rugby values can you can you relate to and can you share? Um, so first of all is uh, perseverance. We have to really uh, work hard. Uh, it never comes easy, and that's taught me a lot about life. Like I have to work hard to get to where I want. Uh, there's a lot of competition in life, just like in rugby, and uh, you got to fight for it. And and if you talk about uh, these experiences, these, these rugby values, right? Um, Sarah, in terms of Syria, you know, uh, you guys have gone through a lot of, um, a lot of probably some, uh, you know, um, Map, a, mem a memory that uh, a lot of people can't relate to, you know, all the fightings and wars that is happening. And these rugby values take that away, give a positive light into your into your life. Can you relate to that? Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, uh, we, we, we're in a bad, we, we've been through so much in Syria and uh, despite the uh, bad circumstances and the situation we live in. Rugby was kind of a refuge to me and to all uh, uh, the players in, in Syria. Uh, it, it felt nice, you know, to, to get out of, of, uh, of that bad situation you were in and, you know, to go into the field and to, to clear your mind and to have a positive uh, uh, atmosphere and uh, to see your friends, your teammates. So yeah, of course, like rugby helped us, helped us so much, you know, in this matter. That's great. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, because of these values, you definitely can relate to. Like you said, rugby is like a refuge, um, you know, to yeah. for you to connect with people, for you to uh, escape whatever problems that you guys have uh, in in your own backyard. And I think we're going to take another Facebook uh, question. Let us see what is this question. Uh, okay, oh, so this is from a Russian guy. So, uh, do you know something about Russian rugby? And have you wish uh, that you are, you want to get an opportunity to play in in the Russian Championship? What about you, Farah? Yes, why why not? You know, um, <laughs> it'd be a great opportunity. Never been there, so you know, I think that would be absolutely great. Uh, what do you know about Rus Russian rugby? For, for, uh, for me, Russian rugby, I, all I picture is snow. <laughs> it just always seems so cold there. But um, 
for me, I haven't um, heard of any teams in Russia yet, or, or like say ladies teams. So I'm not aware if there are any rugby clubs there. But I now is, that he's opened that question, I will probably Google it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. The thing is, guys, if we talk about if you talk about you know going to a, a new team, uh, in the past we have Butsaya Bunra from Thailand. So uh, because she's a neighboring country of where I I'm from in Malaysia, so what she's done before is she's she came to Mal malaysia to join a rugby club right? and everyone was everyone was a stranger to her she only knew one of the girls and she fit in right into the team and she competed with the team she stayed in malaysia for like one or two months just to just for the experience just to socialize with people get to know new people and i guess that's what rugby is all about when we speak the same language which is rugby uh it, it doesn't matter probably yara you can go to uae or probably sarah you can come to lebanon and you guys can connect with each other and play rugby together on the field and probably train together as well um oh, yeah, for I, sure. I want to take one more question from facebook let us see one second or oh, nor hafizuddin abdul rahman again uh are there still social barriers to women's rugby in the middle east yara from lebanon for reckon? sure <laughs> when we came back there was this uh, reporter who uh, basically uh, like i don't want to say trashed but he didn't talk properly and reported properly what happened in egypt and uh, he said that the national the women's national team was a disgrace and that we should never have won oh so yeah so of course it's still a problem especially here in lebanon but uh, day by day like we even from the men's national team we had a lot of supporters who uh, responded back to him and told him they didn't want his support if he was not going to fully support both national teams like the women and the men's so there's there are always two people two kinds of people ones who are fully supportive and others that still need to be educated yeah i guess in terms of support uh, it if you talk about the culture in Asia, women playing sport is uh, last time traditionally it wasn't widely accepted. But I guess as time goes by, like you guys, you guys have started playing rugby and that's a really good thing. So we are breaking that uh, mindset of, you know, women can play uh, sport and you guys are playing rugby right now. So yeah, keep it on guys. Uh, I think all these negative comments should be put aside we need to look at the positivity of things uh last question from the president himself uh Kais Abdullah Adalai. let's cue that oh Sarah Farah and Yara so what what is the most thing that you need and desire from Asia Rabi wow there you go the Asia Rabi president asking you guys if, what do you guys want okay let's start with uh, Sarah so what do you uh, need and desire Sorry, from question. Asia <laughs> Well, uh, I think the most important thing is, you know, for us to to be able to participate in more tournaments because it's it's it giving us so much experience and it's all we need, you know, to to participate more, to uh, to meet new teams, to 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 play against uh, uh, new players. So, so that's that's uh, the the uh, the main desire. That's great. So, Mr. Kais, there you go. Uh, what, okay, what about you, Farah? <laughs> what are I, your? I think exactly uh, the same. Size. I think we all. So I think we all would like the same, you know, to, in order to go fly out or travel, you know, with the team and experience new places, cultures. So I think just like us ladies, you know, we would enjoy to go out and obviously to practice before tournaments and not one month just before. <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> so. <laughs> So I just think that in order that we can do some practice without any restrictions, you know, safely, and then fly out and enjoy on tour with a team. Re representing the woman in Lebanon, Yara. So what do you want and what do you have desired uh, from, from uh, Asia Rugby? Honestly, what uh, Sarah and Farah said is uh, like, it's, ac it's so accurate. Uh, we just need a bit more exposure here in Lebanon, so I guess uh, the backing of Asia Rugby is really going to help us train more and be nationally recognized. That's great, guys. Anyway, guys, uh, Yara, Sarah and Farah, 
Thank you very much for being on the show. You guys have been great. Thank you very much for sharing all these stories, all the experience that you guys uh, go, went through uh, at the Arab Sevens. And, uh, you know, you guys set the benchmark. You guys set the experience for everyone. As here in Southeast Asia, we haven't had any cross-borders tournaments yet. But that experience, I hope with what you guys have shared, have inspired a lot of people uh, in all the regions, especially in Asia. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for joining in. Uh, to all the audience, don't forget to tune in next week as we have another special episode. What is it? Stay tuned. I'm Rod, Yara, Sarah, and Farah. Thank you very much. And to you guys, thank you, you guys thank are legends. You. See you again. Thank Goodbye. Thank you for having us. And Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.